We all love to be greeted warmly when we come home, but sometimes our dogs take that just a little too far. And if you have a big dog and small humans in your home, well, they can be easily unpleasant experiences. Jumping is a dog's natural response when something is exciting or even scary. Now we can help them redirect their enthusiasm and teach them how to do something else that fits a little better into our human world. So let's jump into our topic today, where you're gonna get eight tips to deal with all that jumping. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Now, there's a lot of different scenarios that you might be seeing jumping. Maybe it's at the door, maybe during mealtime, maybe when you're busy but the dog wants your attention, or maybe your pup's jumping up on the furniture or the counters. Now, each of these situations has to be handled slightly differently in order to send the right message to your dog, but we'll help you out with those tips today. Let's get going on tip number one, watch your body posture. Now, depending on how you're standing, you might accidentally be encouraging your dog to jump. So if you are leaning over and using a high happy tone or voice or even the eye contact, don't worry, we all do that. But your dog's gonna naturally wanna engage with you. Dogs are naturally lower than us. So engaging with us means jumping, no bueno. Some people find that kneeling down or getting at the dog's level will help keep all four paws on the floor. Be careful with that though, because becoming lower to the ground could actually create more excitement in your dog. So do a few trials and find that sweet spot where you can engage with her, but she isn't jumping to get closer to you. So for students of our online course, I actually suggest that they do some of their training games sitting in a chair or on a stool. Now this allows you to get a little bit closer to your dog, but not so exciting as you would be if you were on the floor. Now I also encourage them to teach the game, sit when I sit. This is a great one if your dog gets excited when you sit down on the couch. Now you can actually teach her to sit on the floor when you sit on the couch. Now, if you wanna learn about that game, I want you to check out this awesome video on some good training techniques. The sit when I sit game, it starts at around the nine minute and 48 second mark. Tip number two. Don't use aversive techniques. Now, you might have heard someone suggesting use a knee to block the dog or step on the leash to prevent her from jumping or push her down with your hands by grabbing her collar. These are all aversive techniques that just leave your dog frustrated. They can actually make the jumping worse because you're accidentally reinforcing it. Yes, paying attention to your dog, even in a negative way, can actually make the habit stronger. Now remember that a dog doesn't learn from negative techniques like this. It doesn't teach her what you want her to do instead. So skip these techniques because they might make the problem worse. And they're definitely gonna break down the trust and communication you've built up with your dog. Now you're gonna hear me say it a lot today. Teach the dog what you do want her to do instead and practice it in an easy and fun training session outside of the time that you need it. Tip number three, this is another don't do. Don't turn around and just freeze like some trainers suggest. I know you're looking for something to do at the moment, but I'm here to tell you that the best way to address jumping is to try and prevent it from happening. So one way we do this is to teach the dog an alternate incompatible behavior. This is far more effective of a strategy. So turning around and freezing doesn't really teach the dog what you want her to do instead of jumping. And it could just turn into a game of wills. Who can outlast the other? Spoiler alert, your dog can probably jump longer than you have the time to remain in a freeze position. Number four, if your dog does a lot of jumping when you arrive at home, try to build a greeting routine. Now this routine can help your dog do an alternate behavior and teaches her what to expect and what she should do. So many dogs have big feelings at the time they are greeting guests or their owners when they're arriving home. This often leads to jumping. So think of different routines that could serve you better. This could be something like she hears the door open, she runs to her place in the front room or a hallway, and she sits and waits for the owner to ask for a bump it game. You could use a similar technique where you teach her to go say hi to your guests, but in a nice way without jumping. The bump it game in our course is a great one for the go say hi skill. All right, number five, 
have a plan. In training terms, this is called the PMET plan. This refers to prevention, management, enrichment, and training. Now, in order to prevent the behavior, think about what triggers it. Is it you walking in the door, hearing the garage door open, sitting down to dinner? Maybe it's you putting your shoes on for a walk. Think of the trigger and then think about how you could prevent the action from triggering the dog. Now, it could be that she needs to be in another room or be in her crate. Maybe she needs some training specifically to desensitize that behavior when she sees or hears the trigger. Likewise, think of what you want your puppy to do instead of jumping on you. That sit when I sit game is a great example of teaching the dog what you do want them to do instead. Now, PMET plans are how we deal with unwanted behaviors and we talk a lot about them in our online course at the pro level. And if you'd like, we could teach you how to use this acronym to work through your frustrating behaviors with your dog. Just check out the course information below. Number six, use your dog's preferences in your favor. Now, you might have noticed your dog runs and gets a toy when you arrive home or when your company comes over. This is called a displacement, and it just means that she's taking her big feelings and trying to figure out what to do with them. Going to get a toy is fine. It's actually a great option because it gives her something to do that doesn't involve jumping. Now, you can use that as part of your new greeting routine if you'd like. You could also have a toy that you place by the door and when you walk in, you squeak it and you toss it. Now this actually changes the activity into a game that works in the human world rather than out of control jumping. Work with your dog's natural energy and interest rather than against them. Are you jumping for joy with all the amazing tips in this video? Well, we work hard to give you great videos that you're gonna love. You can show us love by hitting the subscribe, share with a friend or use the super thanks. All right, on to tip number seven. Let's talk about those small humans I mentioned earlier. Dogs jumping on kids can be super frustrating, especially when the puppies have sharp nails that could scratch. Now kids often unintentionally trigger the dog to jump because they're low to the ground, they have high voices and sporadic movements, and they often smell good. It's possible that your puppy should be behind a barrier so he can't greet the kids until you've had a lot of training sessions. Now don't worry, it won't always be like this. If you work on training, when your puppy's young, he'll have good habits when he gets older and his brain is gonna be even more developed. Now we often recommend kids use flirt poles to redirect the puppy energy onto a toy that's on the floor and away from the kids. Tip number eight, we can't forget to mention the dreaded counter surfing or stealing things off the counter. Now, when working with our students on this, we use the PMET plan to address it. We start with the prevention. So we pretty much suggest that you block off access to the kitchen and the counters. Then we go into the management part where we come up with a plan to deal with it when it's very likely to happen. Now that could be a treat scatter to redirect the dog. With enrichment, we actually suggest giving the dog plenty of foraging activities in a way that works for you and it doesn't involve the counters. Now busy box is a good example of this. And for the training, well, we wanna teach our students to teach their dogs what else they want them to do which is often go to a place or bed while in the kitchen with the human. Now let's talk about one other scenario where jumping happens a lot, meal times. Meals can be very exciting for dogs. When you have a set meal time during the day, like I suggest, you might find the pup is pretty excited to get to the bowl, the snuffle mat, or a Kong. Food is a natural trigger for excitement, and that means jumping. There are some really good skills that you can teach your dog at mealtime to help him be calm around food and wait for your release cue to begin eating. Now, if you're interested in that, you can check out the next video, which can give you all the details on how to create a well-mannered pup in the presence of food. This applies to all food, not just dog food. Now, did one of these tips help you in your situation of your dog jumping? Which one was best for your situation? Now, if you have a situation that wasn't covered here, comment below and we'll reply with some tips. Until next time, this is Michelle Lennon, your favorite online puppy trainer, signing off.